Hi friends, welcome to the session 13. Let us continue our discussion. Today we are going to be discussing about control flow instructions. Okay, this is little different from what you have seen so far, and this is going to modify the way the program is executing the direction and it might the flow of the program will be modified based on these instructions ok. So, we will see what are the instructions support this and then what are the requirements for this from the higher level language perspective and we will we will see a couple of examples to understand how does it function ok. Very good, so pay attention to this because this is something to do with the program counter because these instructions are going to modify the value of PC which register it is R15 ok. So, anything that touches this register we need to be careful otherwise uh, we will be taking the program to some other unknown location. So, when you are writing this program using this instruction you because assembler takes care of it most of the thing, but you should be able to understand what is exactly happening what the uh, assembler uh, the component generates. Uh, which instructions ok. So, let us see what are the things we need to be careful about ok. Now, this session we will talk about why we need a program control flow, why do we need the control on the program flow and then in specific to a control flow instructions the normal thing what we look at format and the data path what happens inside the data path that is inside the processor when this instruction comes into the processor and then we will also look at the timing that the, the number of cycles that is this instruction take and then some usages of those instructions ok. Very good, why do we need program flow control ok, what is the default execution flow of a program? you know that this is a code memory assume ok and PC is currently pointing here. So, you know that the width of this code memory is 32 bits right we are only talking about ARM state of the processor not a thumb mode. So, ARM mode. So, in the thumb state the instructions are all 32 bits wide. So, the PC will be keep on increment and incrementing to next locations that is plus 4 and then as soon as this instruction which is in this 4 words come into the processor the processor executes it and then it automatically increments the PC accesses the next instruction and then it this goes on. So, you know the pipeline pretty well. So, whatever PC is feeding the instructions come what is the first stage by now you should know what are these stages are fetch ok this is fetch stage of the pipeline and this is decode ok and this is execute. So, the key the PC keeps on incrementing by 4 and then the instructions keep coming into the pipeline and then processor executes it. So, when it is executing a particular instruction in the execute stage it may take 1 cycle or it may take n cycles based on what kind of instruction you have executed what is being executed if it is a LDM or STM instruction which is multiple load or multiple instruction it is going to take more cycles based on the number of registers are transfer based on what what is transfer it is going to take more time. So, if this particular stage is blocked it is very natural that these stages are also blocked ok it is like a queue you cannot dump a queue ok. So, you have to wait the instruction need to wait not you the instruction need to wait for the previous instruction which is occupying the stage to be completed. So, this is very clear to you I have explained this multiple times in different scenarios. So, I am just trying to recall all that so that you are able to understand what is being discussed in this particular lecture ok. Good, so sequential access you all understand. Now, the program counter is incremented by 4 which I mentioned and then it is feeding the pipeline which are the instruction words which are 32 bits wide. Now, apart from the normal sequential flow of the program, we need a selection and iteration. Okay, these two are different kinds of program programming paradigm, or a, not a paradigm. It is programming uh, different operations that a program does. Okay, 
when i say program we we are talking about a high level language either c or c++ java whatever language you know so these languages support different different instructions okay and you know that you can write a function and then you can call a function suppose this is a function foo in a high language in a main okay you are writing your c code then what do you do you write this function it will be in another file called foo.c maybe and then this is another file which is called main.c is there you are compiling this file and this file and linking them all together and then building a executable and then running it on a arm processor for our example this whole thing is running on a arm processor now now you are calling a function foo suppose it is accepting this is written in this file file foo.c it is accepting an integer assume that it is a parameter okay now what happens you will be calling it with some variable in this case j then you will call this now what exactly happening this whole c program has to be compiled and then it if it has to be run on a arm processor the compiler will generate some arm assembly code correct so for the try the now what happens during the function call okay the program comes here the execution now when you are suppose you uh, if i use c++ you know uh, visio c++ or visio uh, any of the uh, development platform if you are single stepping it and then you say that okay i want to execute this and then i want to know what is happening inside the function if you are single stepping it and then going into that then immediately the control will jump to the first instruction in the foo dot foo function okay in the that foo is there function the control goes there then you start seeing that it is getting executed and then when the function ends it comes back and then start executing from the next instruction maybe here i plus plus is there it will execute this instruction so what exactly is happening in the program in the assembly code it this call of a function okay it is supposed to call a function from this so this will be replaced with one set of instruction which we are going to talk about today so that instruction takes the control of the processor to some other location where this program is loaded in the memory now when i say it is taking a control what does it mean actually it is actually taking the pc value normal flow the pc would have got incremented to the instruction which may be a small c code here which could get expanded to a, a set of assembly code so it would have executed this instruction in a normal flow pc would have got incremented by 4 and then it would have got you know it will be executing all the assembly code which was generated by the compiler but when a foo is called a function is called then the control goes here and then it is going to pc is going to access every assembly instruction which was generated by compiling this c dot file here foo dot c it it would have generated some um, obj and it would have compiled and then you know combined together and link file would have been created and then that is code is sitting in the memory code memory so now we are going to see when you we are having such a control flow happening changes happening in the program order the way it is getting executed how is it implemented in the assembly code okay so there should be a support by the processor for compiler to generate that code so that these kind of things can be done okay the finally whatever c code you write is not going to be executed this going to what is going to be executed is the set of assembly instructions so there should be a support in the assembly code to enable this program flow so that the r15 the pc register is modified accordingly so that you get the same feel of what the original programmer intended to do in the c code or c++ code whatever high level high level language so our focus is going to be how this is done now tell me you might have seen all this in your high level language so if some condition is true execute this otherwise there is no else here so it will just fall through that okay you uh, just to refresh your memory if suppose i is greater than 0 this code what you have written i plus plus okay has to be done 
if this is not true then executes whatever is written here in the C code. Similar things should be done in the assembly so that you have a uh, whatever is intended here is executed by the processor ok. So, it is one form of representing what you are interested in performing and assembly language is the same thing is converted in this language so that processor understands what it is supposed to do ok the job of the compiler is to do this. So, now you will not see if or else in the assembly code ok you will not have a if instruction in the assembly code. Similar you know this whatever is seen here is converted into a set of assembly instructions which implements this particular intent ok what the programmer wanted very good. So, maybe program there are some constructs like if this condition do this else execute some other set of instructions. So, if this is true only this set of instructions should be executed and this should not be done. If this is false then this should not be done and only this should be done. So, this kind of conditional statements need to be executed in the assembly. So, what are the support needed for that? So, when I say a set of instruction that means a yes, small few lines in this some suppose 5 lines of C code you have written that would have been transferred to some 50 lines may be I am not saying that it is always plus into 10, but that it is in terms of some n ok. It certainly it will be more than number of C instructions that you see in the code which when it is converted into assembly there will be a set of uh, you know huge number of instructions. Now, they will be starting from some address 100 and then it will go up to 200 assume. Now, you have you are saying that if this condition is true maybe 0 is set ok I want to execute this otherwise I, I want the to this to, to be executed. Now, how can you do it in assembly you have to put some condition instruction to say that if it is 0 you execute this otherwise jump to this instruction. So, that it falls through this. Now, suppose if else you are put in uh, in this case what happen even do not if you execute this after this you jump here otherwise come here and then execute it and then come here. So, it could be if else or if then anything needs to be communi you know communicated to the assembly uh, to the processor to the assembly language. Now, this you understand and while loop. So, you might have seen lots of code written in C or C++ where it says as long as i is greater than 0 do this set of instruction ok. So, when you see this after this execution what happens you will be incrementing i plus plus or in this case I am saying if it is greater than 0 you do it. So, if the loop has to be um, terminating so it should be uh, sorry what I mean by this i minus minus you should do ok. So, you are initializing the i with some 10 ok and then as long as this is more than 0 you keep increment you know keep doing this instruction and then it is decremented once in every iteration. So, you do not see that the control coming here and then checking this condition and then falling through it, but when you are converting this particular C code into assembly what it what you may have is some assembly instructions and then incrementing will be replaced by in our case add whatever i is i is uh, you know there or if because it is a minus minus maybe it is a subtract. Subtract instruction will be done and then it will check branch if it is equal to ok. This may be where this particular instruction is starting uh, label is may be uh, l l 1 suppose if 0 is equal to 0 you do not jump. So, n e ok suppose it is converted into branch n e l 1 what does mean i is decremented and then if it is not equal to 0 you come to l 1 otherwise fall through that. So, effectively this while loop has to be converted into assembly instruction which will perform this job. So, even the same thing is true for for loop also. So, when you have such instructions in your C code when the language has define such a constructs in the programming language assembly needs to support them ok. So, let us see how they are implemented in our case. So, basically these instructions are PC modifying instructions 
to support those high level language constructs we support by the assembly language instructions which can change the flow of execution. Now the flow of execution can be changed if assembly instruction modify the PC that is very important PC is what R58. Now PC modify the instruction can be of two types one is unconditional what does it mean always you jump to that particular where will you have this kind of unconditional jump when you have in a high high level you know uh, construct suppose I will tell you uh, for for loop you have ok inside that now you suppose here you are saying that break ok you have put a break condition a break instruction ok in the C what does it mean if the control comes here it is supposed to come out of the for loop maybe the when it come comes out of the for loop it has to come somewhere here. So whatever is the instruction which are generated specific to the these high level languages that address should be given for this control to come here that means this is the branch to this label maybe assume that this is L2 then as the compiler would have generated a code to say branch L2 if your condition is control is coming here please go to L2 this is an unconditional branch ok it is not checking the break is not checking if is there or inside some condition is not there. So, it is a unconditional branch if there is a if then else it is a conditional branch ok. So, that is what I am calling it as a con unconditional or conditional. Conditional branch always checks some of the flags. So, how can the processor know uh, if i is greater than 0 or less than 0 all those conditions it will do a compare or subtract or add some arithmetic operation it will do and then it will make one more thing you have to remember ok. Compare if it does anyway the flags are affected automatically so you do not have to worry about it, but when you are writing this instruction suppose not you maybe a is generating it will remember to put the yes there ok. If you recall these instructions default do not impact the season key these flags. So, the compiler has to take care suppose if it is going to take look at these flags based on this instruction you should put the yes there. So, that it this instruction affects the flags and then it takes a based on this flags it will take a branch to some other location. So, this is called conditional branch ok. Let us see now I have not told you what are the instructions that support this. So, let us see this is the instruction ok. How do you write it? This is B, B stands for branch, ok. L is optional because it is within the parenthesis. If L is mentioned, let us come to that later. Assume that B is the condition, if this condition is true, maybe the branch index instruction also can be you can add the concept, you know, condition inside, and then what will be here? It will be a label, ok label means it is a assembly label ok in the assembly instruction a particular instruction will be give associated with some label and that will that address will be computed based on this instruction. Now, how does this particular instruction help in computing it ok actually what you are you still remember this is 32 bit wide instruction. So, you cannot have a uh, an absolute jump with a 32 bit address ok it has to be a, a reduced number of bits allocated for offset as much as possible they have given 24 bits here ok. Now, I will remember this then we will we'll go to the next slide and then I will explain you how this offset is modified ok, how it is computed we will come to that ok. Some offset is computed who computes this offset it is done by the it based on the compiler or assembler whoever is computing it they look at the label and where it is located and based on the address it will generate the offset. It will compute this offset and then generate an instruction by fitting in this offset in this particular bit positions ok. We will see some examples then it will become clear to you. Now, let us talk about L. L is another indication to say that when you are branching ok, when the processor is branching. Uh, let me give you an example suppose B L L 1 is a label ok. Now, L 1 is here ok set of instructions are there. Now, 
if suppose if you are calling in the original C program, you are calling a function, then what happens? When you are calling a function, the control should go to the function and then it should return back. You remember? It should return back to the location which is below the this instruction which actually took the control to the function. I am calling this as a function, the, L, the function is starting at L1. So, the condition the control should come back to the instruction which is below BL. Now, how can it be achieved? See, once the PC is modified, okay, by adding this offset or subtracting this offset from the current PC, okay, and then the control comes here, the processor does not have any means of finding out where where does it have to come back to okay it does not know this PC is lost it is overwritten when I say PC is offset is computed and it is control is coming here it is very implicit you are uh, it is very obvious that the PC value would is overwritten. So, that register value whatever is holding the address the R15 is modified now what happens to that this address is overwritten with this address and then it will keep on executing it by incrementing it by 4. Now, how can will it know how will it know when where to come back to which address to come back to. So, to inform the processor we need to store that value somewhere we means the processor uh, while executing this instruction it should make sure that the address for to which it is supposed to come back should be stored somewhere. So, that the control can come back. So, ARM processor supports it with the help of a reserving a register for that purpose which is called a link register. Why is it called link register? Because it is linking the function with the call in a scholar and call if you have if you are know, knowing about this somebody is calling another function and then this function is linking back to that caller by storing the value or the address to which it is supposed to come back. So, where will you store because R14 is modified, so it has to be stored in some temporary register. So, the processor does not in, you know, uh, insist that you should store it only in R14, but if you are using this instruction it will certainly be stored in this location, but you are free to do it by doing using some other registers also ok. But assume you are using a BL instruction then it will automatically save this value into R14 which value the address to which it is supposed to come back to. Now, how will you make sure that it comes back who does that that is also be generated by a code at the end of the function it is some function some code has to be written which will copy ok this whatever value is there in R14 into PC ok. So, it cannot come back automatically some you no know, assembler or a compiler has to generate a code which will copy the R14 value into PC so that the control comes back. I hope this this is uh, you are able to follow, but I will show you some examples so that it becomes clear to you. So, to explain this I am giving you a background of what is happening in the processor ok. So, if you are using a BL instruction automatically the address of the next instruction is stored in the R14 and then the control jumps to the wherever the offset points to ok wherever it takes to PC is modified. Let us see an example then it becomes clear to you ok let us move to the next slide. So, branch jumps to offset address given with the instruction if you have mentioned just a branch label ok some label then this instruction just just goes there that means what PC is modified to point to this. So, in this case the R14 is not affected please remember only when you say L it will be affected. So, that means what you are not or the assembler or compiler is aware that the program is not interested in coming back to this next address ok. So, it does not have to bother about where is it jumping to jumping from. So, it is a you know it is going there, but without bothering about whether it has to come back or not. Suppose if the code is like that you have a one way jump, but you are not it is not a call to a subroutine or a call to a function. So, you do not need to bring the control back to the this address ok. 
So in that case what happens BL is not used B only is used and then the control goes there. So R2 R14 is not used by this instruction ok please remember that. Now branch with link if you say this then what happens is the old PC value is not an actual old PC value this is a PC value next to the current BL instruction ok that, that is what we are calling it as a old PC value. Suppose BL instruction is at 100 the 104 will be stored in the R14. So that when you copy that R14 into PC the control comes here ok it will not come automatically it has to be brought back by copying R14 into PC ok very good let us go back ok. So the PC value written into R14 is adjusted why, why it has to be adjusted what I mean by adjusting let me explain again I am bringing back the pipeline by now we should know that but still let us see I am now found of 100. So let us see here assume that I have put a BL instruction to L2 um, L2 is what at some 200 ok you know this is the address 200 and assume that all the addresses what I am writing is all in X argument ok. So that you dot dot is there please remember there is so much of memory I can't draw my screen is only limited to this size. Now remember the pipeline now see always when you look at any instruction this pipeline should be at the back of your mind ok. What is this yes I will not say what is F and what is D and what is E ok. Now what happens when will the BL get executed when the instruction is here is it correct. Now when this instruction is here and getting executed that means what what I mean by getting executed it has the offset which has come along with the instruction whatever is the value ok it has come along with the offset it could be plus or minus what will this do it will add this value with the existing PC ok plus or minus offset it will do and then write that value into PC. Now apart from that it is supposed to do one more thing whatever is the address that is 104 should be copied into R14 correct because I said BL is getting executed. So it is a branch with a link that means BL is located here. So whatever is the offset it is a, uh, which will co compute the PC to 200 and then it will start executing whatever instruction here. Do not bother about how will it come back we are not worried about that right now I am only explaining you what will the PC do when it is supposed to store this R14 value eh, sorry uh, the correct value which is supposed to be the instruction which is next to BL into R14 I said that something has to be adjusted why come back to PC the pipeline ok which instruction will be here whatever instruction here ok x whatever and uh, this is 108 which instruction will be here whichever is at a 108 you, are, you agree because when BL is here the next plus 4 will be here it should have got decoded here but the next to next instruction is getting fetched and then it is sitting here. Now what is the PC value at this moment when this BL is computing this offset adding that offset what is the value of PC is it 100 or 104 or 108 it will be 108 because you just saw that it has fetched this instruction. So PC will be that only after this cycle only the, uh, the auto incrementer in the data path increments the value and then initialize it with the next address after this execute this instruction goes out of the execute state. So uh, the PC is actually 8 and you are computing some offset to go there but you are uh, you are likely you are supposed to save this some PC value which is next to this BL instruction that means it should not save 108 into R14 you agree if it saves 108 in the R14 the uh, control will come back here if somebody copies the R14 into PC the control will come back here but the control should come here 
because the instruction next to BL is this. So it should subtract four. Okay, basically adjusting means subtract four and then keep this address in R fourteen. Okay, and then it should add this offset or subtract this offset and then come to the next location. In this case, it is supposed to add that offset and then come and execute this instruction. Now, can you realize that when this jump happens? What happens though the pipeline previous stages of the pipeline the X and Y are here already but they are not supposed to be executed now because the BL wants the control to go here that means the instruction here maybe you call it as A B that should come here into the pipeline ok. So what effectively happens is this will be flushed to circuits are wasted now A will start moving into the pipeline first it will come here and then after that A will move here and B will be here after that A will get A come here and B will come here maybe if there is another instruction C that will be sitting here ok. This is a kind of pipeline happens. So please remember when you are flushing the pipeline do not think that A can jump here and then start executing skipping these two stages it is not possible until the fetching happens until the decoding happens an instruction cannot come into the execute stage to get executed. So, there is no shortcut it has to go through this ok different stages it has to go through. So, effectively two cycles uh, the two instructions which were there will get emptied and then the control flows here. So, this is what I mean by adjusting that means R14 should be copied with the address which is next to the BL instruction ok in this case BL is assumed. So, I am saying because R14 will be modified only when you use a BL instruction ok. Good, I hope you understood this. Note that the CPSR is not saved with the PC. If you guys are aware of x86 processor, ok, some of the instructions, ok, especially when it is uh, an interrupt or you know, uh, the call, call, there is a call uh, assembly language in x86. So, there are some instructions ok in x86 or in some other processes also which will default save some CPSR also if it is required ok. But please remember there is no implicit saving of CPSR when there is a branching happens in the ARM processor. So, do, do you do not think that it will be saving it ok. If you need to keep that you have to save it yourself otherwise you will lose the value what was there in CPSR. Now, R14 inside the R14 after this address is saved ok after this is done inside R14 1 and 0 bit that means R14 you know it is a 32 bit register right. So, it will have 0 to 31 bit right. So, 0 and 1 what are these bits they are the lower 2 bits of the address which address program address please remember this is the program address code address. Now, code address changes in a 4 byte bar it is aligned always 4 byte aligned and then it gets incremented by 4 always ok. That means, the address 1000 our favorite 1000 is the first instruction next instruction will be at 1004 only can there be any instruction between these two addresses can it be 1001 2 or 3 it cannot be you agree if if you you get only from 1000 you jump to 4 from 4 you jump to 8 means jumping means the addresses change keep incrementing by 4 that means the lower 2 bits are always 0 correct. If you change this bit position it will be 0 0 0 for and then 1 0 0 4 8 is 1 0 0 0 C is 1 1 0 0. So, you see that lower 2 bits are always 0 because it is a 4 byte aligned because of that reason because you are writing something into the R14 now it always makes sure that this 1 and 0 are always cleared ok because there are 2 bits reserved for that position in the register. So, that will be 0. Now, to return from the routine called a branch with a link now I am coming back coming to the uh, place where how will you come back from the subroutine 
remember you went to l2 okay the you jumped you know the sorry i am saying you 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 are not jumping actually processor is jumping sorry about that okay now bl l2 is we said it came here the processor control came here it start executing now i told that this address next to bl is saved in r14 okay you also know that it is done now wherever this function ends suppose it should write some code for this control to come here what is that code that is what is given here you know that pc can be used as a, a simple rd in the move instruction so you when this adjustment is already done okay which is pointing to the instruction next to this it is very simple that you can come bring the control back to this particular place by just copying r14 into pc you agree so this is what will bring the instruction the control back to this location okay so what is given here is the instruction this instruction okay this is how the control comes back to the location which was saved in r14 okay prior to the bl instruction okay good now there is another way also you can do you know by now you are familiar with ldm so suppose when you were, were going to another subroutine bl this is a subroutine then you went uh, you know took the control to l2 you know that there are some instructions here which you have written as a subroutine and then you will be using a lot of registers right r0 r1 r2 there are so many registers you are using here but in the original code in the original flow also you are having instructions which are being used now if the control comes here and then it modifies some of these registers which was mod you know changed here and then you come back by executing this instruction either move or ldm instruction you come back here will you have the values which were before this you will not have it because if you have modified them in this subroutine you call it as a subroutine suppose you are calling a function which is you know which is using some registers so in that case what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to save the registers which you are going to be using in the subroutine and then recover copy back those registers okay just before coming back so that you get the same state of those registers that 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 was there prior to this bl instruction to achieve this you have to use ldm you know you have to use stm here okay store whatever registers you will mention it in the register list okay to stack somewhere in the stack you know that maybe r13 you may be using as a stack pointer or any other register you put them into the stack suppose it is going downwards you keep on putting them okay and then when you are done with your function you will be generating a writing an ldm to say copy back the same set of registers so that the stack comes back here and then and then you do a ldm pc that may uh, in this pc what will you do is you will write r14 okay that means the pc value is copied the whatever is there the stack no stack you will be saying that which is actually stored in r14 because suppose your r14 is saved here okay this register that r14 you will be copying into pc so that you come back to this location so the pc is restored by using a, a stack instruction uh, that means ldm okay because you are saving that r14 in the stack otherwise you may not have not saved it then you are to take care that r14 is not disturbed in this function okay that is very important then only this one to overwritten so please remember when you are you are writing assembly code you are supposed to take care of the instruction the register contents if you are expecting it to be maintaining some continuity in your program okay then so we are taking more time here i hope this is all clear to you so that now next few things we can go faster so offset is computed now offset is 24 bit i said because 24 bit only is possible for the arm instruction to reserve it has reserved all the 24 bit now it is shifted by left two bits why see when it is saved it is saved suppose you are supposed to 
no you know that the bottom two bits are always zero right i mentioned to you that this one and zero the sorry uh, bit one and zero of the address is always zero inside so you don't have to save this two bits while computing the offset what you do is suppose whatever address you will get by adding this offset that offset itself you save it such a way that only the higher 24 bit is saved and the lower two bits are recovered by shifting it left okay so what exactly happens is you get a, a 26 bit wide offset actually because it is all four bit aligned so you are four byte aligned so you are very clear you are aware that these two bits are anyway going to be zero so you can accommodate more number of offset values if you save only this part of the offset okay anyway this will be zero because all the addresses are always four byte aligned so that's why you see that it is when you compute when you get the offset from the instruction the uh, processor when it gets the offset value it actually shifts that by two bits so so you remember that when the assembler is putting it inside it should shift right and then store it and then the processor will internally shift it left by two bits and then recover it okay so that way you are uh, your two bits are saved so that more offset can be given now you may wonder why this offset should be greater as far as far as possible why i'll explain you suppose this is where your program bl is there okay currently you are executing this you are willing to come back to this with the r14 saving this but from here how far you can jump how far how far you can make the processor okay minus offset and plus offset how far you can make it go decide about okay how much instruction no how big the instruction could be in the core memory and then how far you can reach them so the processor will try to accommodate as much as possible so it has done its job no arm processor they have accommodated 24 bits and then they have also given you another two bits of uh, advantage so maximum 26 bits of offset can be stored not 32 bit of offset if 32 bit of offset is there the whole range could be covered remember if you see the whole code you know code memory including data and code the whole thing is 32 bit wide right that means plus or minus suppose it is in the middle plus or minus 32 bit in the middle if it is here it should jump even more than that right so if it has to jump the whole memory area which is available it will need at least 32 bits or even maybe 33 will make it clear, you know come here but you are limited with the 24 bit and then additional 2 bits so 26 bit offset so you this processor can jump only 32 megabytes plus or minus 32 megabytes you i want you to verify how by saving and you know having an offset with a width of 26 bits okay plus or minus 26 you have only 26 bits to represent the offset in two's complement form how can you get a 32 bit uh, byte of megabyte of offset okay so it can go for our as far as possible that is the maximum is plus is here minus 32 by megabyte and this is plus 32 megabyte in the core memory it can jump the control can go so that is what is done here by this particular instruction so the offset is taken and it is plus or minus is done now how will it know whether it is plus or minus there is no bit anything anywhere stored here to say it is plus or minus this offset itself is stored in two's complement form please remember so what does the processor do it uh, left shifts it by two bits right that you i told you maximum it will accommodate 26 bits it will become then it will sign extend please remember sign extend if it is name it will be all one if it is uh, msb is zero or zero it will sign extend it up to 32 bit and then now it has got a maximum two or no two uh, complement uh, offset value which will be added with pc whichever is the current pc to compute the new pc value and that will be written back into pc again okay please remember this is what is happening when the assembler or the compiler has generated the offset 
this is what the sequence of operation it will be a shift left by 2 bits that means this will be 0 and then now you will get a 26 uh, no, uh, this 26 bit value you will get and then you do a sign extension to 32 bit so that any operation is in the processor is 32 bit wide. So this offset is also made 32 bit wide as signed value okay to its complement value and then it is added with the current PC value and then the control goes to P. So then PC is modified then control naturally goes to this location new location okay very good. Now I am sure you will be very clear now this is what I mentioned to you okay. So this I have already told you PC will be two words ahead of the current instruction this I explained to you already. Now suppose if the you are going to big code and then it has to jump to beyond this 32 megabyte what it is supposed to do is it should use a previously loaded register maybe it could have written the offset into some place memory okay the 32 bit value whole 32 bit value and then it can do a load uh, if you remember pseudo instruction I said LDR ADR I mentioned right ADR in the last session. So address calculation this ADR instruction what does it do it will compute the address. So it could be in another memory location also that whole 32 bit offset can be copied and then added with the PC okay. So if it is not possible to you know if the jump is farther from 32 megabyte it has to be done by previously loaded value into a register or from a memory copy and then modify the PC accordingly okay. Good so these are all not to be done by us by the tool but still you should be know knowing what actually happens okay. Now this is an interesting part of the instruction okay how does the BL get executed. Now by now I think based on whatever I explained you should be able to clearly understand PC is coming through the A bus okay PC value which is the current PC value and then offset is coming from here why should it come from here it is not sitting anywhere in the register okay please remember offset was with the instruction which was decoded uh, fetched and decoded and then passed through a pipeline register if you remember between the stages there are pipeline register which carry the information about that particular instruction. So it is carrying it is passing on the offset value which was read by the instruction along with the instruction that is coming through this backdoor entry it comes to the barrel shifter automatically it knows if it is executing BL it is supposed to do a left shift logical shift left okay by 2, 2 bits because you know that 24 bit has to be made into 26 bit okay originally 24 bit offset is only written into the instruction. So 26 bit sign extended inside automatically the sign extended value will be going into this now it is just added why it is just added the positive or negative is based on the offset value okay B will be either positive or negative. So you have to just add along with the PC value to get the new address where the control has to be going and it is written into address bus. Now tell me what is this address this is the new that B1 or L1 or L2 whatever I mentioned that address is written into this which goes into the address bus to fetch the instruction in a new instruction got it I hope this is clear to you. Now let us come next cycle in the next cycle I if suppose it is a BL instruction please remember if it is a BL only this job will be done if it is B this this particular cycle will not be there. So I am explaining for BL I have put both here but please remember this is only meant for BL why copying into R14 happens only with the BL instruction branch with the link register. So what is it supposed to put it I said adjusted if you remember that adjustment is not done here it is done in the next cycle but whatever is the current PC value what is this PC value let me come back again to the example L2 okay assume that this instruction is at 100 and L2 is at 200 if you remember that is what I said now the 200 the new address has gone here okay please remember 200 has gone to the address register and the new instruction is getting fetched during that time the next cycle even after the one instruction uh, the new location is fetched 
next cycle still the pc is still fresh with the value which is actually 108 because it is plus 8 right it was execute it was actually fetching this instruction right so 108 is there in this register pc it is still not modified with the 200 so this 108 comes here and goes with gets written into r14 okay the same value is written there is no adjustment possible here because you know you see that it is equal to a what is written into is whatever comes on this bus what will come on this bus whatever is there in r15 r15 is right now 108 so 108 first gets written into r14 okay while the instruction gets incremented by 4 and the next instruction gets accessed here 204 goes out remember originally here 200 went in the next cycle 204 goes that instruction is getting fetched, but still you are that R or PC is still R14 which is getting entered into R14 now. Now you may wonder who will do the adjustment ok. Let me explain you in the third cycle ok remember in the third cycle after this cycle is done in the third cycle what will happen is this R14 will come here and then this will be programmed the ALU will be programmed to minus 4 ok it will do minus 4 and then it will write back that value R14 will become which one 104 is not it correct 104 will be written into R14 ok uh, it is not PC ok please remember in the third cycle it will be R14 will be written copied and then written back into R14 ok same R14 comes here which is 108 subtract by 4 minus 4 and then 104 you write back into R14 at the same time in the third cycle what will happen this incremented value will get written into PC. So, PC would have by now modified to the new location 208 or whatever it would have got changed, but this now R14 preserves the old PC value ok that is what I said PC is also updated with the new 200 that 200 plus maybe 204 or 208 based on you know which cycle we are in that will get written into PC because that can be written parallelly because PC has a separate read and write port and then the rest of the registers have to read and write port. So, it can happen in the same cycle. So, that is what happens. So, I hope this data path is clear to you. Now, this will be very 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 uh, obvious ok this will be sequential cycle this is also a sequential cycle because it is next instruction only. But will this be sequential though the same fetching is happening the new instruction is getting fetched from a new other location. So, it has to be a n please remember ok and then afterwards it will all be yes. Now, how many cycles that branch with link or branch it takes it takes this many cycles which are what are they 2 s and 1 n 2 s and 1 n is the number of cycles it takes. So, I hope you will be able to compute this on your own ok. Now, let me ask you to take a 5 minutes break not to go out of the class just to look at this instruction discuss with your neighbor and then try to understand what is happening here ok. I have given some comments also, so that you would not be totally surprised with what is happening please spend some time understand this ok. Let us get back you can um, rewind it after a 5 minutes, so 5 minutes break. Ok welcome back I think I do not have to explain now because all of you would have understood it just for the continuity sake let me tell you this is what just a branch does it affect R14 no. R14 is not touched by this instruction. Where does it jump to? This location. Now, I will leave it to your uh, experimentation. Okay, what will be the value of offset here? If you if you if you can guess the offset value, then only I will say that you have understood this fully. Okay, though it is not your job, assembler. Uh, compiler will take care of it, but knowing this is better. So, when whether it is a simple branch or a branch L the offset is same ok. 
please remember whether it is just a branch or a branch with link register the offset whatever is computed is same way which is depends on the the label where it is going but based on l is there or not this next instruction whatever is the next instruction gets saved into r copy okay please remember that clearly so in these two instruction one is a just a branch another one is branch with link so what is the offset i will explain you maybe explain one here you can compute the offset here and then you can feed the same set of instruction in your simulator and then try to under see what happens there okay so tell me what is the offset the process uh, the assembler is supposed to put in the instruction the pc the current pc is 2008 which that is the instruction where the b is there getting executed but during this time when this branch is in the execute state where does pc point to it points to 1010 where this particular label points to fortunately or unfortunately it is to the same location please see that i have written b sub here and then written this code so it is nothing between these two okay this is the this is the address this b sub is pointing to so effectively whatever is the incremented pc value is where the particular jump is supposed to happen here so when the compiler or assembler generate this instruction it will make sure that the offset value is zero because it knows that pc would have been already pointing here because pc plus 8 is this and they were uh, jump is also happens to the branch is also happening to the same location so pc need not have to be modified it just has to be added with zero but you have to mention some offset so it can i can as well mention the offset as zero which will actually correctly point to the location where it is supposed to go now tell me what happens to this when this bl is done immediately it comes here and then it executes another bl where it saves this address in the r14 okay r14 register will have the value exactly 1014 it will have okay i want you to run this code in your simulator and check every content okay but the control will come here first okay when it comes here you can check r14 is modified to this value or not okay now what is the offset it will compute the pc will be here actually plus 8 so it has to add this 4 and another 4 so plus 8 has to be added so what will be the offset stored here will it be plus 8 or will it be plus 2 please think it over if you recall what i mentioned offset is not the exact offset it is a right shifted value 2 bit to the 2 bits okay so originally offset was computed to be 100 but it will shift it right shift it by 2 bits to become make it just 10 which happens to be a 2 these are all all zeros right so offset will be stored as 2 in this location offset will be 2 now how will it come back to proper value you know that the processor shifts it to the left by 2 bits so that it will get back that value originally and then it will add it with the pc so that it will come back to this location okay understand it it is very important now tell me this will be executed this will be executed then what happens here r14 i told this value is there so it is copied into pc so control comes back to this instruction it will get executed after that then this is the software interrupt we will talk about this instruction later on this this takes the control back to the processor so this is what happens in this okay if you understand this and if you can find out what is the values of offset computer you are an expert in branch instructions okay good now branch with exchange okay what is this normally when you say exchange means we are exchanging values okay i exchange money with you means i maybe you are exchanging a uh, money with the shop keeper then what do you do you give money to the person you get some item back right that is what is called exchange but here this exchange doesn't mean that it is exchange means it is not two way it is it's a one way actually what does that mean 
suppose I have written a code instead of dx or b b or bl, I say dx or zero. Okay. So what it actually means is the PC, whatever is the PC R to P, okay, is copied with the value which is there in R zero. R zero is what one of the registers. R zero to R fourteen can be used for this purpose. Okay. Please remember, R you cannot write R fifteen here. You can't say I want to exchange my PC with my PC. Okay. It is illogical. This is not allowed. Okay. Other than R fifteen, you can. Say that I am interested in exchanging the value what is in R some register with a PC. See, effectively this could be done with a move also. Okay, move PC comma R zero also does the same thing, right? Here the BX code has some more uh, intricacies to that. I will explain to you. So uh, it is a little different from move. Okay, it is not just act moving. Okay, it has got some other uh, meaning also, but I'll I'll explain that BX. Okay, now BX does this job. It exactly copies the value in R zero. Okay. Now, does it copy everything? No, doesn't. It copies branch causes a. Okay, first of all, let me explain you what does the branch causes. If a pipeline crash happens, and then uh, no new instruction get fetched. All that are same. It's, uh, it's the same as what I explained to you earlier. Okay, this also takes the same number of cycles originally as B and BL. Okay, just hold on. Uh, I will tell you the difference as I explain this. R15 is used as an operand. In the if it is you are trying to say BX come BX. Please remember it is only one single operand. Okay, you cannot write BX R15. Okay. And this instruction also permits the insertion. Uh, I said permits the insertion set to be exchanged. What I mean by insertion instruction set exchange? Uh, I need to again remind you of two modes. Though I have yet to touch upon the thumb mode here, okay? But this instruction cannot be explained without bringing that uh, uh, thing to you, okay? At least for a moment, and assume that. Arm mode is what whatever we have seen so far. Thumb mode is something little different, which means that it actually assumes that 16-bit wide instructions are saved in the memory. Okay, in the thumb mode. Whenever the processor is running in thumb mode, what we mean by that is I, I told you earlier also. Just I am recalling that it just accesses 16-bit at a time. Okay, it could read 32 bit and then internally uh, organize it, but actually every instruction is only 16 bit wide. Please understand that is a different mode. Now, how will the processor is communicated? Either whether it is accessing a 32 bit value or 16 bit value based on a thumb mode bit in the CPSR register. So, actually this BX instruction is used for informing the processor that okay. Going forward, you are going to get 16-bit instruction from the memory. So you are supposed to interpret whatever you read from the memory as 16-bit wide instructions, not 32-bit wide. Okay, that is what you are informing the processor. So how is it done? It is done by setting one bit in the register. Okay, let me come back. Now I said that BX instruction can exchange with some register. I am taking this example as R0. What exactly happens? Assume that this is at 100. Okay, and R zero is having two hundred. Our favorite uh, subroutine. Okay, now assume for a moment it is two hundred. Then what happens? This two hundred gets written into R fifteen. Okay, R fifteen is R zero is moved into R fifteen. So what happens? The control flows goes to two hundred. Now during that time, what you can do optionally is in the R zero bit. What I mean by R zero bit? If suppose you are using R0, there will be LSB right for the register. Assume R0 is there, LSB bit is there. You know, in a in a typical ARM instruction, the two bits, last two bits are always zero, correct? Because it's a four byte aligned. But you are intentionally making this bit one. Suppose you are doing, or maybe the assembler or compiler is doing. Now, what the processor thinks, you no? Know, when it receives R0. And then it sees that LSB bit is set. Then it will know. Okay. Now the programmer is intended 
interested in moving back to thumb mode moving back or moving to okay it doesn't matter from arm mode to thumb mode that means what going forward what are instructions you uh, you encounter from the memory please read it as 16 bit wide instructions internally process it as a 16 bit okay you run it in thumb mode so it is different mode of a processor okay but only thing is it has to be communicated to the processor that it is going to be a 16 bit wide instructions so that one will indicate to the processor that it is a 16 bit mode it is jumping to so it will start reading from 200 202 204 okay you see the difference 200 202 204 because it's a 16 bit two bytes so 200 and 201 will correspond to one instruction 222203 will be another instruction like that it will be interpreting it so that is what is communicated by setting the lower lsb bit of the r okay i'm sorry this should have also been r okay very good so bx is used uh, to switch between arm and thumb mode okay thumb mode will be discussed later in detail okay don't worry about that now let me ask you one quiz take 2 minutes break read through this come back welcome back um you can now find out how many people have different answers okay so you can see the distribution of the class how many having these answers i am sure all all answers would have been picked up by you or maybe only one hopefully hopefully that is correct one okay this is a why just come back uh, though this bit one is set okay it is ignored inside the processor other than setting the mode to thumb mode t mode the instruction will fetch from leaving the lower lsb bit why because if the all the thumb mode instructions are all two byte wide so the similar to arm mode in arm mode two lower bits are zero okay in arm mode two lower bits are zero are always because it's a four byte boundary in thumb mode lower bit is always the lsb is always zero so the instruction address is only the remaining 31 bits please remember that okay so what is the remaining 31 bit even if you expand it it will not be any of them right it can't be this because i said you have to go to 1000 only so it can't be 1004 it can't be this it can't be this it has to be this only okay it will just do you are giving 1001 only the lsb bit is made zero and then remaining value is copied into pc so pc will move to 1000 okay i hope you are able to understand this i explained a lot about this so these are the two byte boundary addresses and these are the four byte boundary addresses so if it has to be jumping to 1000 it has to be this address not this one or any of this okay good let us go again we have a, a very interesting uh example you can even take 10 minutes if you want please don't break away this is the last slide of this class so finish this and enjoy your day take a break come back okay welcome back i hope you are able to understand what happens here let me explain this is very trivial okay i have put some instructions just to keep the processor busy and keep your brain also busy so that you know it is not just instructions of our interest i am just keeping some instructions uh, it doesn't have any meaning other than wasting the cycles of the processor what is happening here this is very important you should not miss out this move you can ignore this moves but you can't ignore this because is a very interesting register is there so r15 gets copied into r0 tell me what is the value of r15 and what is what gets stored in r0 you know currently it is executing this instruction or pc will be here so actually this address please remember r0 gets this 
Okay. That's what I am saying here. Now the next point of interest is this one. What happens here? R0 is added with 4 and written back into R0. Very straightforward. So it was having 1010. 0, 0. Please remember R0 is not modified anywhere here. So it is safe, intact. Whatever you saved here is there, which gets added to 4, 4 by 4. So 1010 0, 0 gets become 1014. Now what happens here bx r0 now currently what i was saying 1014 so after this instruction where will it jump it will come here correct because r0 was holding 1014 now this will be executed now again it is going to execute this at this moment 1014 was there which will get added to 104 so it becomes 1018 Correct. Okay. Now, when this bx is executed, the value of r0 is modified. It is changed now. So it is it is not going to jump back to this location like what it did. Will it come to this location? Agree. It will come here. Now, what happens? Here again is getting added by four. It becomes 101c. Please remember. It's all in hexadecimal. So, what is 101c? Its own instruction, correct? So, when this is executed, will it go anywhere else? Will it go anywhere to this area or this area, or will it stay here? It will stay here. So, what happens in the processor is is very funny, but uh, it's interesting. Okay. Bx gets executed here, okay, and then at the end of the BS, R15 is loaded with the instruction 101C. So it will flush these instructions, whatever it has you know, access, and then it will load again the Bx instruction, okay. So it will come here again, it will it will do the same thing 101C is written into R15. So this process is now locked on to this it will never move to any other location forever it will be here agree if you do not agree read again understand this if you do not understand this go back to previous lecture because this is the crux of what you learned in this lecture ok. In fact it corresponds to something you learned earlier also because you are seeing add and other instruction. So I am sure you will understand this. Please run the same code in your simulator. Seeing is believing. Don't trust me. I may have given something wrong here. Please try it out. Try out the same set of instructions in your code and experiment it. Understand it. Then you will be an expert in assembly programming. All the very best. Okay. That is what is done there. Now one more small example which I have. I already shown earlier, so ADR instruction during this time the last session I explained ADR means it will uh, copy it will load the address of this particular label with one ok additional one is added to R0 ok where is this label the label happens to be here ok this label is here so assembler computes the address <coughs> and then adds one to that and then puts it in R0 ok. Now when this BX is done the control comes here at the same time because you have set the B R0 <coughs> bit 0 is 1 it moves to thumb mode. So it will execute all this as 16 bit instruction ok and then it will execute a BX R5 uh, these are all thumb mode instructions but these are similar to ARM instructions only R5 is copied with back to ARM back to ARM is does not have a bit 0 as 1 it is 0 here. So once this bit is 0 it will know that this address is bringing back to ARM mode. So it will start fetching the instructions from here as 4 byte values ok it will interpret them as ARM instruction with a capital bit value. So basically you know I will come back to this again when I am explaining thumb mode but 
am saying that BX is used to change the instruction mode of the processor, instruction set of the processor. It changes from here it was ARM mode, it went to thumb mode and then it came back to ARM mode ok by executing this BX instruction by properly modifying the bit 0 of the register. Remember this could be any register as long as that bit particular bit is but register is loaded with the address of the instruction this will work. So, I hope this is clear to you even if you not understood fully do not bother when we talk about term mode it will become much clearer, but it is part of the BX instruction I thought I will explain you how the mode changes happen using these instructions ok very good we have come to the end of the session today um, in this class we talked about program flow why it is required why high level languages have a while loop and for loop and if then else and how assembly can support those kind of control flow and what are the timings data path we saw in detail and then we saw a few examples and you have tried out also from a program as an exercise. So, and we saw how this helps in arm to thumb mode H you know switch switching between modes ok. Thank you guys all of you for your attention I hope this was very useful this is very interesting part of the discussion. So, we will discuss again come back again with a some more interesting stuff on the ARM processor. Thank you very much for your time have a nice day bye bye.